So I'm gonna hand this over to Sheldon to tell us everything. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Sheldon. All right, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I guess everyone is seeing our introduction to bird watching picture that's up on the screen right now. Um, these are some examples of what serious bird watchers look like out in the field, all looking up with binoculars and scopes. And, uh, and that does actually happen where you see up in the top left hand corner a bird landing on top of somebody's head. Uh, that's a gray jay and gray jays are very uh, aggressive and uh, super friendly birds. They will come and perch on you, if, uh, particularly if they see you have food. But uh, anyways, that is our introduction uh, page to get us going. So we're gonna, it's gonna be very basic. Uh, we'll give you a little bit of background on birds and then we're gonna show you, and hopefully if it works, you'll be able to hear the sound of the first 20 birds that you will probably see if you have a feeder in your yard or just keeping an eye in your local area. So we'll, uh, we'll start looking at those in a moment. But first off, a little uh, introduction. Um, Oops, there we go. Uh, if you, uh, at the end of this event, want to get in touch with me, there's an email address for you uh, to use. And if you have any questions, uh, if you take pictures of a bird that you're not sure what it is, you can send it in and we'll take a look at it, try to identify it for you. And uh, we can also send you some basic information about bird watching and some information about our organization as well. So uh, feel free to uh, use that email address if you have any further uh, questions at the end of the presentation. So we'll move on. I see we have a few kids in here too, so you'll probably like this next slide. This next slide shows you that a lot of us really do like birds and birds have an influence on our life. And uh, they've had an influence on what people do creatively too. I think you'll recognize some of the creatures in this next slide. <laughs> um, this gives you an indication that birds are really popular. We like them. They make us laugh. They're used in cartoons. They're used in TV shows and what have you. So you see some of the more famous ones here. Um, we see Big Bird up in the top left-hand corner. We see the Roadrunner down in the bottom left. Um, others on the picture, I'm sure any kids watching know the Angry Birds that you see in the picture here. Uh, we have Woody Woodpecker, Daffy Duck, Tweety Bird, Woodstock is the little yellow bird in the middle from the uh, Peanuts comic strips. And uh, we have that big rooster up in the top who's a Looney Tunes character named Foghorn Leghorn, a very loud and uh, boisterous bird that you uh, see in some of the cartoons. Some of the older cartoons that some of our adults here will remember as well. So this gives you an indication that, uh, you know, we like birds and we see them in all different shapes and sizes and uh, in different formats as well. Most of these birds are actually based on real birds. There's a few of them we're not really sure what they're based on. Like Big Bird, I have no idea what kind of bird that's supposed to be, but um, the same with the Angry Birds. I don't really know who these guys are, but uh, I, I think they all have names. I'm not real familiar with them, but I'm sure some of the kids are. Okay, so let's move forward. Now, birds, believe it or not, are a subgroup of reptiles. They're closest in, in relation to reptiles than any other living creatures. Um, they are the last living examples of dinosaurs, believe it or not. And some of you have seen flying dinosaurs, the pterodactyl in particular, which is a giant creature that was able to fly. Well, there's the connection between reptiles and birds in that some reptiles evolved and turned into birds and developed feathers and were able to fly. So there's some very unique things about birds and uh, we'll talk about some of them because they stand out. They're really different uh, than any other creatures that we have. There's some things that are totally unique about them. So we'll uh, take a look at this to get us going. There are over 10,000 different species of birds in the world. And they go from the very, very small, the one on the left you see is a little tiny bee hummingbird. It's only five centimeters large, which is like two inches. And then it goes all the way up to the largest bird on the planet, and that's the nine foot tall or 2.75 meter ostrich. Now, uh, What's really unique about the ostrich, it's one of the birds that is so large and the way it's developed that it cannot fly, even though it has wings. It's just too large to be able to get itself up off the ground. So there are a few other birds as well in the world that are unable to fly. One of the most common ones is penguins. 
penguins we see with wings flapping, but they actually use those wings more like flippers, almost like a, like a dolphin. Um, and they are unable to fly. It looks like they're flying through the water, but uh, they cannot get themselves up off of the ground either. So that's probably one of the most common birds that we uh, think of as not being able to fly. But certainly the ostrich is one. There's the emu, which also uh, that bird comes from, out, from uh, Australia. Uh, there are a few others in the world as well. But in general, most birds have the ability to fly. So here are some of the things that are quite unique about birds. One, they have feathers. They have beaks, but they have no teeth. So there are no birds on the planet that have teeth. So that's, an Im that's interesting because different birds find different ways to eat and to, to, to pick apart their food without having teeth. You can imagine if we didn't have teeth, it'd be kind of hard to eat some of the stuff that we eat. So birds have adapted to different types of beaks in order to eat the types of things that they like. Uh, they lay hard shelled eggs, which makes them very similar to reptiles. Instead of having live babies, they have eggs and then the eggs hatch very much like reptiles do. Uh, they have a high metabolic rate, which means that they process their food very quickly, which is why birds eat a lot. They burn up a lot of energy because they fly, which takes a lot of energy. So therefore they eat a lot. So the whole system of their digestive system is very fast. They have a four chambered heart. They're very lightweight in general, but their bones, their skeletons are really, really strong and rigid. Um, and the other thing, of course, birds have wings um, and that's what gives them the ability to fly. So those are some of the things that are really unique about birds. Uh, a couple of those things do show up in other animals as well, but pretty much all of those things are unique to birds. So let's get into some birds. We're going to look at the first 20 species that are most likely to be seen in and around the Montreal area and southern Quebec. So if you go out to your yard and you're just watching the common birds that you're going to see, if you have a feeder in your yard, it's going to attract them. But just looking around, if you go to a park or wherever you may be, you're going to see birds, you're going to hear birds. And in our region, these are the ones that you're probably going to see before any. So uh, there are a lot more than 20. You're going to be able to see a lot more, but these are probably going to be the first ones that you're going to come across. So we'll take a look at them. And one thing to remember is there's something unique about the difference between male and female birds of the same species. Sometimes they look very, very different. Sometimes so different that you might think you have another type of bird when you're actually seeing a male and a female. So we'll look at some of those as we go along as well. So here's our first bird and it's the house sparrow. And we're looking at a male here. And I'm gonna try this and see if it's gonna work. I hope we can hear the sound of these birds as well as we go along. Let's give it a try. Okay. Whoops, we don't want him to go again. I'm not sure how to stop this. Anyways, this is the male. So you see he's got this black face and dark coloring on the back. We're gonna to move to a picture that shows you the difference between the two of them. The bird on the top is the female house sparrow. So you see it doesn't have the black face, doesn't have the dark markings on the back. And you see the picture at the bottom with the two of them uh, side by side. So they do look very different. So when you're just starting bird watching, you may look at these two birds and think, wow, I've got two different kinds of birds here, but that's not the case. So we don't only have to learn one bird. In many cases, we have to learn two to identify the male from the female. So this is a good comparison here on this uh, particular bird, the house sparrow. Next, and, and here in our yard, we are being bombarded by these birds right now. Uh, these are the European starlings. And um, you see it's got some pretty unique looking things about it. One is that big, heavy yellow beak, which really stands out. And uh, that's pretty easy to see on the bird. And you'll see that the bird is quite speckled. It's uh, a good sized bird. It's uh, not a huge bird, but a good sized bird. It has these long skinny legs and skinny toes. And uh, they look a little different uh, 
at different times of the year. Right now we're seeing them in a, in a special type of breeding plumage, which you're gonna see in the next picture. I'll let you hear this bird first, and then we'll look at the, what some of them look like right now. This is what they sound like. And they're usually in big groups, so you're gonna hear more than one of them at the same time here. very noisy and they like to imitate other birds too sometimes we get confused we hear an interesting sound outside we go take a look and it's actually starlings making sounds like other birds so they're what are what are called mimics they they imitate other sounds of other birds we don't know why but it's just something that they do so this is what a lot of them look like right now they have this really neat coloring and lots of speckles on them you notice the beak isn't yellow on this guy uh, some of them as they start to age will change in colors. So an older bird will have the full yellow beak like you saw in the previous picture. So these are very, very common. You're gonna see lots and lots of these birds around right now. They are emptying our feeders here almost every day at the house. They're very hungry right now. Next is the pigeon. Its official name is the rock pigeon. And we see these birds all over the place. Even in right downtown Montreal, you see big flocks of them. Um, what's interesting about this bird is, again, you may think you've got a lot of different types of pigeons, but really they're all the same. In this respect, they're a lot like people. Some people have dark hair, some people have light hair, some people have uh, uh, mixed color in their hair, uh, some have different color eyes. Well, these birds are similar in that they look very different. You can see a brown one, you can see a white one, you can see this natural, the, probably the color we see the most is the one you're seeing on the screen right now. We can't tell the male from the female, the same as the starling before that, which I forgot to mention, you can't tell the male from the female. Um, I think this one works. There's the sound of the pigeons. Some people say it sounds like their song is stuck in their throat. It's not coming out really clearly. But now you'll see what I mean by the difference. Look at this picture and forget the two birds up in the top because that's another kind of bird. We're going to talk about them in a couple minutes. But that whole group of birds on the bottom are all rock pigeons. So you see that they come in different colors. So you're not seeing different species of pigeons. You're seeing the rock pigeon they just come in different colors. So you might see uh, white and black ones, some brown ones, some very dark ones, the lighter colored gray ones. Uh, so a real mixture of pigeons. And if you see a big uh, flock of them anywhere, you'll probably see that difference right away. Everybody knows this bird, I think, the big black American crow. And uh, I'll let you hear him. I'm sure you know this sound. Okay, now what's neat about crows, whoops, let's go back again, hang on. What's neat about crows is that they pick a mate and they stay with that mate for their whole life. They, uh, which is unlike a lot of birds. A lot of birds uh, just pick a different mate every year where the crow is different. It picks one mate and it stays with that mate for life which is pretty neat. So you often see two crows together. When you, it's very seldom you see one crow. You'll see two together and that's usually a couple. And sometimes you see three or four together and quite often that's a little family as well because the baby crows stay with their parents for a few years before they go out on their own. So um, if you see a little group of them together, chances are you might see a, a mother and a father and a couple of their young with them. Uh, this is a bird where we can't tell the difference between the male and female either by looking at them. So there's your American crow. Now they have a sort of a relative that we're starting to see a little more around our area now and that's our next bird. And he's a looks like a crow but he's a lot bigger and it's called the common raven. And you can see how large he is by that picture down below where he's flying. Um, characteristics of this bird, kind of scruffy looking. 
It's got a huge, huge, huge beak, very, very large, and it's quite a bit larger than the crow. Now his sound is a little bit different than the crow. Again, we can't tell the difference between a male and a female here by looking at them. Um, you're gonna hear his sound is a little bit like the crow, but it's quite a bit different when you really listen to it closely. <laughs> almost kind of scary sounding. <laughs> it's a, a really unique sound. So we're starting to see more and more of these, these uh, ravens around us now. So let's move on to our next one. Mystic. And this bird is called the morning dove. And look at the spelling of morning. It's not like morning versus night. It's morning, like it's sad, like something, uh, something sad. Um, and the bird kind of sounds sad too when you listen to it. It's a strange little cooing type of sound. Um, these birds, again, we see them quite regularly. They're not, uh, you can't tell the difference between a male and a female by looking at them. It's part of the dove family, which is the same family as the pigeons that you saw earlier. And here's their sound. Yeah. Sheldon, I'm going yes. to interject here. It's Danielle speaking. Okay, so we're going to uh, move on to our next bird then. Do you think we could spoil everyone and go back and just do the quick just, random sounds? Because sure. Awesome and uh, they're so lovely. Okay, we'll go back. Just a little sound test, and it'd be so nice because we can really hear it now. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so first off was the house sparrow. House sparrow. And we'll move over to the starling. This is the one that uh, sounds like a whole, there's a, you'll hear a whole bunch of them in the background here. European starling. I think that was getting too loud almost. I see somebody blocking their ears. Okay, this is the pigeon. Okay, and then the crow. This one might be a little loud again, be prepared. American crow. One thing I should point out is that some of the birds you're hearing them starting with one sound and then a, a different sound. Most birds have a, a, a song and then they also have different types of calls. Some are a warning call, some are used for some sort of communication between them. Uh, some are territorial calls, particularly when birds are nesting. Uh, they might put out a warning call if there's some predator coming close to the nest or to try to scare something away. So a lot, of, a lot of different birds have different types of calls or songs that they'll use at different times. Okay, so here's the raven, which is uh, quite different than what we heard with the crow. All right, then we go from the loud raven to the quiet, Morning dove. Morning dove. You can hear crows in the background. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so male and female morning doves look the same. We can't tell them if we're looking at them. Okay, so now we're caught up. So our next bird is the black-capped chickadee. This is a bird that we see year-round. As a matter of fact, most of those birds that we saw up to now, we can see them year-round. They're not just birds that we're going to see in migration or only in the spring. We have a lot of hardy little birds that can stick out our winter and uh, uh, they've got, you know, body fat that keeps them warm. They've got the feathers uh, so they can, they can put up with the cold. Most of the, a lot of the birds that we see leave for the winter are birds that eat insects. Obviously they can't find food in the winter here. So they move south to places where it's warmer and they can get uh, uh, food, get their insects there. Uh, the chickadee is a bird that stays here uh, year round and they're real friendly little birds. Sometimes if you go to a park with some sunflower seeds in your hand, they'll come down and eat out of your hand. And what's really nice is that these birds what I like about them is they say their name. Listen to the bird call and listen for him to say his name of chickadee. Black capped chickadee. And this is another bird where we can't tell the males from the females, so they uh, they look identical. Very common birds. Uh, with, they're very very fun little birds to watch too. They do like sunflower seeds. It's one of their favorite foods. Okay, next we move into a couple woodpeckers, and woodpeckers are kind of different in that. Most of these birds we've seen sit straight up, you know, on their, on their feet. When you see a bird hanging on the side of a tree, that gives you an idea that it's something different. And woodpeckers do that, and a couple others that we're gonna see do that. And uh, you'll see these birds going up and down the sides of trees, pecking, as their name says, woodpeckers. Now, these, we're getting into some birds where we can really easily tell the male from the female. So what we're seeing here first off is the male. This is the smallest woodpecker that we have. We have a bunch of different woodpeckers, but this is the smallest one. He's maybe about, uh, oh, I'd say three or four inches long. Now, this is what he sounds like. Downy woodpecker. And there's his hammering. You'll hear him. There's the hammering. Now, you're gonna see the female and you should be able to tell the difference fairly quickly. Here's the female. If you notice what's missing, there's no red on the female's head as there is on the male. So there's a distinct difference between the male and the female. So you can tell if you've got a pair of them coming to your feeders, for example. Uh, we have a pair that comes here regularly. They, we have a peanut feeder hanging on the back deck and uh, we see the male come in and we see the female come in so you can easily tell the two of them apart. Otherwise they look the same but uh, that red dot that you saw up on the head of the, uh, we'll just go back and take a quick look. There's the red dot and uh, we don't see that on the female. All right, our next bird is another woodpecker, only this one's a little bit bigger. If you notice the difference, particularly in the size of the beak, this is the hairy. You see the smaller beak on the, on the downy woodpecker. So it's a little bit bigger bird. It's got a bigger beak, looks very similar, sounds basically the same. I'll just play a little bit of this. Hairy woodpecker. It's a little deeper sounding chirp. They do squeak a lot too though. And now you'll see the female 
Watch this red dot disappear as we go to the female. So they're common in the two different types of woodpeckers is that red on the head on the male's head, no red on the female's head. And there you get a really good look at the size of the beak, how much different it is than the first woodpecker we saw. Okay, this is a bird that's come back now. They are, we see some of them in the winter, but most of them leave for the winter and they come back uh, in the springtime. Now, most people just say, oh, that's a seagull. Well, that's kind of a nickname for these birds. There is actually no bird called a seagull. They're called gulls and there's different types of gulls. The one that we have the most of around here is this one called a ring-billed gull. And you can see why it's called a ring-billed gull for obvious reasons. It has this black ring around its yellow bill. If you're trying to identify it, you see these bright yellow legs on the bird, the bright yellow beak, the black on the, on the beak. And if you're close enough or you have binoculars, you might see that red circle around his eye. Now we, uh, we have a funny nickname for these birds. We call them the McDonald's birds. That's because they're usually hanging around fast food restaurant parking lots looking for food that people throw on the ground, which is not a good thing to do, by the way. We shouldn't be feeding birds those types of things. But uh, this is what they sound like. And again, these birds, we can't tell the male from the female by looking at them. Ring-billed gull. Very noisy birds. Now, because we live on an island and we have lots of water around us, we do see a lot of those birds hanging around the water. So if you're out uh, by the river anywhere, or even, even around town, though, you're going to see these birds flying around a lot now. All right, we come back to another uh, bird that we see on the sides of trees. Now, if you notice, the woodpeckers were pointing up. Well, this bird is pointing down. And um, this is called the white-breasted nuthatch. You see that long skinny beak there. And uh, you'll see these birds going down the side of a tree. Usually they'll, they'll climb down the side of the tree. They're picking off little insects and what have you off the tree. And then they'll fly back up to the top and work their way down the bark of the tree again. They will come into your feeders as well and pick up food from your feeders. Uh, male and female look the same and uh, they have a very distinct sound. White-breasted nuthatch. <laughs> Some people say they sound like a monkey. This bird is around year round as well. Okay, uh, because we have a lot of water around us, we have a lot of birds in the water and one of them is our most common duck and it's called the mallard. And here is a real classic example of how much difference there is between a male and a female. We're seeing two mallards here, one male, one female. Look how much different they are. Again, when people start bird watching and they see these two birds out in the water, they think, wow, I've probably got two different kinds of birds here because they look so much different. When in effect, it's the same species. So the male, very brightly colored, uh, the green head, uh, brown, sort of a, a almost a, a rusty colored chest, that big yellow bill. And if you see them out of the water or in shallow water, they've got orange feet which stand out really uh, quite bright. Uh, the sound is very familiar. I don't think anybody would not know this sound. Mallard. All right, so there's your mallard, our most common duck. 
there are lots of other ducks out in the water too, though, that you can take a look for, uh, especially at this time of the year. There's a lot of them that come up from the south. They uh, go to their breeding grounds here, have their young, and then return south in the winter. So at this time of year, we're seeing a lot of them passing through. So we can see sometimes up to, oh, like easily 10, 12, maybe more species of ducks. The most common one that we will see is that mallard. And those mallards, will some of them will stick around here for the winter as well. Okay, the next bird is the American goldfinch. And here we see the difference of male and female. Uh, not as brightly colored in the female, and that's common in a lot of species of birds. The male have these super bright colors, and they're used to attract the attention of the females, uh, particularly for mating season. The bird looks very bright and colorful and is attractive to the females, so that's why you see that, that difference. Also, it's mostly the males of, of pretty much all species who do all the singing. Females don't do a lot of, of vocalizing at all. There are some that do, but most of the, the sounds that we hear out of birds comes from the males. It's used for various purposes that we talked about earlier. One, to attract the females with the bird's songs. Uh, for defense mechanisms, uh, they put out warning calls, they put out uh, danger calls. Uh, so they have a variety of different sounds. Um, let's take a listen to the goldfinch. American goldfinch. Some people have compared these birds to canaries, which some people have canaries as pets. I remember when I was growing up, uh, my mother used to see these birds and she used to tell me that they were wild canaries. Um, I guess just because of the coloring. There's a whole bunch of them together there. So the, uh, as I was saying with those birds, um, the male and female look very different. Uh, the songs get kind of mixed up, different sounds. Once the birds have had their young though, and the babies have left the nest and uh, the birds are finished mating for the year, a lot of the birds stop singing. You don't hear as much of the singing as you will hear in the springtime when they're looking for mates and when they're having their young. Uh, so the birds get a lot quieter after the, the mating is finished and after the babies have gone and left the nest. So uh, right now when they're starting their nesting periods is when we're going to hear the birds singing the most. So it, uh, listening for the birds and trying to identify them by sound is easier to do at this time of the year than it is later in the year when they're maybe not singing as much as they are now. So our next bird here is the blue jay. And uh, this is a really nice bird. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen it before. Uh, male and female look the same. Uh, they do stay here year round. We see them all uh, through the uh, spring, summer, fall and winter. And uh, they're very noisy. They have a lot of different types of sounds and you'll hear an example of some of them here. Blue Jay. That squeaky one we actually call a, sounds like, like a squeaky door. It sounds like somebody needs to put oil on him because he's squeaking so much. All right, our next bird, another bird that stays year round is the Northern Cardinal. And uh, these birds are probably waking you up right now, early in the morning. The males get up very early in the morning and they start singing and singing and singing. And most of that is putting out calls, looking for a female to come and join them. Uh, so the bright red male, obvious way to spot this bird, the pointed head, the black mask, and the bright red coloring. The female though looks very different. The shape and everything looks the same, but you see the coloring is very, very different. And it's going to be the male that's going to be doing all the singing. And uh, let's take a listen to some of this. They've got a great repertoire of songs, uh, many different calls as well. See if you can recognize the one that sounds like a like a, a ray gun from a Star Wars movie. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's really a strange sound coming out of a bird. It's a little ways along, but we'll take a listen. Northern Cardinal. Yeah, so. Man, there's a lot more people than I thought. Man, there's a lot more people than I we thought there would be. Yeah. Lucky luck. Quite a mix of sounds. There's the ray gun. All right, our next bird is the American robin. And uh, not a lot of difference between male and female. Usually it's just a little paler, uh, the color. Uh, right now we're seeing the males though, really bright, 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 uh, rusty colored, uh, that big uh, sort of the beak color almost matches the bird. Uh, these birds like to eat worms uh, out of the ground. We don't, most people think these birds disappear in the winter from our area, but that's not really the case. We see a lot of them in the winter actually. They can't find worms, but what they do find is uh, things like fruit that are left over on trees, apples, cherries. If you go to the botanical gardens in the winter and you go to the section of the gardens where they have all the fruit trees, you're going to see a lot of robins. Uh, this January we were there and we saw over a hundred robins in the botanical gardens in the month of January. So it's not necessarily that, that phrase that everybody says, oh, the robin, it's the first sign of spring. Not really the case. So I'm going to show you the bird that, really, that we really think is a sign of spring coming up in a second. But uh, let's just take a quick listen to the robin. American robin. Okay, now we come to an evil looking bird. <laughs> this is a, this one is a kind of a scary looking bird, but we see a lot of these birds. There are probably more of these birds around than any other birds right now. Uh, them and the starlings, I think, are the two uh, that we see the most of right now. Uh, these birds disappear for the winter. They're all back now though, and it's called the common grackle. Uh, there's a slight difference here between male and female. You see again that the, the male is a little more colorful uh, quite easy to spot these birds. They're quite large. They have that very dangerous looking beak and that bright yellow kind of scary looking eye on them. Um, they're very aggressive. They, they get very pushy around the bird feeders. They try to scare a lot of the other birds away uh, so that they can come in and eat as much as they want. Uh, not one of the most pleasant sounding birds though. Uh, I don't think you'll like these sounds very much, but uh, we'll take a listen. Common grackle. Not very musical compared to some of the others we heard. Now, we talked about the bird of spring. This to me is the sign that spring has arrived when the red-winged blackbirds return. It's a very appropriate name. It's a blackbird with red on the wing. It's got some yellow in there as well, but mainly the red is the predominant color on the blackbird. It really stands out. And this is the male. And uh, these birds come back in the spring. And what's kind of funny with these birds is the males come back first. They come back about two weeks or so earlier than the females do. So the females stay south the males come back north and they stake out their territory. They look for a place that they think is gonna be a good place to build a nest and to have their young. So the males come ahead first, they look around, they find a spot, they grab it, and they sit on that spot and they wait for the females to arrive. And when the females come in, they look at all these males out there and they figure out, okay, I like that one, let's join up with that one. So this is the sound that I think many bird watchers in this area listen for every spring. 
And when we start hearing this sound, we kind of know that spring is finally here. Red-winged blackbird. Now, a little bit of warning about blackbirds, red-winged blackbirds. If you happen to be walking somewhere where there's a nest, be very careful. They're very aggressive and they will come at you. They will swoop at you, they'll yell at you. Um, we've had cases of people getting close to the nest and the birds actually coming out and trying to hit you uh, as they come past you. So they're very, very aggressive and very protective of their nests. So uh, we always like to keep our distance. Now, this is probably one of my favorite examples of showing you the difference between a male and a female. This is the female of this bird that we just saw. A dramatic difference. Again, people look at this and, wow, I've got a new bird here. This is a different species. Well, no, it's just the female of the red-winged blackbird. So very, very different looking bird. Uh, it does have some nice little unique markings, though, this little bit of orangey stuff on the face and uh, the mixtures of the brown and black uh, and white. And it's also got this very large eyebrow up here uh, that you can see that helps you identify it as well. But the, male, the females are very quiet. They don't make much noise. It's the males that do all the, uh, all the racket that you heard earlier. And if you uh, live near water or a marsh or something like that, you're gonna see a lot of these birds will nest in their marsh. They like marshy areas where they can hide in the, uh, the bulrushes and the, and the reeds that are in the marshes where they like to make their nests. The song sparrow, the song sparrow has come back to us uh, just recently. We're starting to hear them around our area. It's a small bird. A very distinct mark is this black dot right on the chest and they're very streaky. And this is a classic pose of the song sparrow as it sits, throws its head back and sings. And you'll see why it's called Song Sparrow. It's got a great song. Song Sparrow. Now, one thing that's really neat about birds that's kind of unique, we talked about unique things at the beginning. There's one thing I didn't mention. Many birds have what's called dual vocal cords. If you hear, they're making two different sounds at the same time. And it's something that we can't do really. Our voices are our voices. You hear many of the birds with two different sounds coming out of them at the same time. And if you look at the makeup of the bird's throat and its cords, its vocal cords, it's very unique, very different. It allows them to make all these different sounds and sometimes to be able to make two different sounds at exactly the same time, which is pretty weird. But uh, something again, unique about birds. Uh, this is our last bird. Uh, and I put this one in here because of how much water we have around where we live. Uh, we have lakes and rivers and, uh, you know, the St. Lawrence River, anywhere you go around the island. Uh, you find marshy areas in a lot of uh, our areas around our, our territory. And one of the birds that we see in those marshes is this very large and almost prehistoric looking bird. And it's the great blue heron. Uh, this is a bird that's maybe about, oh, I'd say three feet tall or so. So like a meter, I guess, something like that. A uh, very large bird. Uh, classic poses here, you see them flying. Think of that di flying dinosaur we talked about earlier, the pterodactyl. Uh, this bird makes me think of that dinosaur because of its shape and its big size. And uh, it's, it's very, very common in our area. Uh, they don't stay here for the winter though. They can't handle our winter. So they've just come back and they'll be staying here for the rest of the uh, spring and summer and fall. And then usually around October, November, when it starts to get cold, they'll pick off uh, a time to leave and off they go to, uh, to their grounds uh, in the Southern United States, down into Mexico, uh, Central America, places like that. 
And uh, not a very nice sounding bird either. Uh, kind of sounds like a, a nasty dinosaur, maybe. Take a listen to him. Great Blue Heron. So there are 20 birds there that we went through. I know it went by pretty quick. Uh, they're probably the most common ones that you're going to see. Um, now, I guess we can take some questions now, if you like. Uh, Danielle, do you want to uh, jump in here? Uh, hi, thanks. We really all enjoyed that. It's so wonderful to hear all those birds and see all the birds and hear you speak about them. Um, I think, well, of course, people were asking about how to feed them, but I think that's going to be our next presentation. Right, yeah. Again. But we could, we could easily say, you know, if you do have any type of feeder, uh, if you're, you know, if you've got a yard or even some people in, uh, in condos or whatever have a spot where they could maybe put out a feeder, um, that's going to help attract birds to your, to your place and you'll be able to see more birds that way. Uh, it's also helpful to the birds to find food. Many of them have traveled great distances now during migration, so they're always looking for some food. Uh, so a feeder is a, is a good thing for birds at this time of the year. Uh, it's also good during their mating season because they have to feed their young and they feed them very quickly and constantly. Uh, birds uh, mature usually very quickly, so they have to be fed almost constantly when they're, when they're very, very young. So having food around for the birds, uh, they'll find natural food as well. They're not going to be dependent on your feeders, but uh, it's, it's kind of like us going to a restaurant. You know, we have food at home, but sometimes we, you know, like to go somewhere and, and have food given to us <laughs> uh, and prepared for us. So putting a feeder up can help the birds like that as well. But we okay. will talk more about that in our, in our presentation coming up later this month. Great. Um, so one thing is people are wondering how to take this knowledge that they got from you today and bring it with them, let's say, when they're looking for birds. So is that on Bird Protection Quebec they could find maybe photos or? Um, there's a couple of different ways. Um, can I, how do I get rid of my, uh, just let me get rid of this here mm -hmm. uh, so that people can see me. Are they going to see me if I close this down? Um, you need to click on uh, your screen share at the top. It says stop sharing stop share okay oops there we are okay um well i'll let you set that up but there is a question that just came in by chat that says what are the white birds that look like the great blue heron okay uh that is um same family of birds it's called a great egret uh spelled e-g-r-e-t uh they're about the same size as the uh, great blue herons some people call them a white heron, but that's not correct. It's, uh, its name is egret, and the ones that we have around us are called great egrets. Now, a uh, couple things that you can do. We talked about our organization, which is called Bird Protection Quebec, and our organization's been around for over 100 years now, believe it or not, uh, uh, based in Quebec. And uh, we have a website and a Facebook page. Um, you can simply go to birdprotectionquebec.org. Now, one of the things you can find on that page is this document, which I'm holding up here. It's, it's a checklist of all the birds that you could possibly see in our region. It's a bilingual list, um, and there's over 300 types of birds on this list. So you can download a copy of this off of our webpage. And you can use it sort of as a scorecard and check off the different species of birds that you've seen. So you can keep a record of, of which birds you've seen. The other thing you can do is you can find books. We use a book, this is one of our most popular books. It's called the Sibley Birds East. And it has all different birds listed with pictures and descriptions of them. Um, it shows you males and females. It shows you where they come from, what their range is. So oh, somebody's holding up a Sibley, I see that, very good. So that's a great book for you to have. And there are also online resources as well. One of the best ones that we recommend for helping you to identify birds, it comes from a university in New York State called Cornell University. 
and they are one of the biggest uh, universities that teach ornithology or the study of birds. And they have an incredibly good website that's called All About Birds. So it's simply allaboutbirds.org. And you can look up any bird at all on there and it will come back and give you all the information, pictures, videos, audio sounds of the birds, explain a lot about the birds, how to help identify them. Uh, so that's a really good website to use as well. Um, other things that you'll find on our Bird Protection Quebec webpage and our Facebook page are pictures of birds that some of our people see and take pictures and post them up. Uh, we also have listings of events that we have. And right now, because of, of needing to stay home because of the virus situation, uh, we're doing trips, uh, not out in the field, but people are monitoring birds every Saturday morning from your home. So you don't have to go anywhere. You can just watch the birds that come around your house, make a list of them, and you send them in to us every, every weekend after every Saturday morning. We compile a list of all the birds that have been seen, and then we post that on our Facebook page every week. So uh, people are seeing sometimes as many as 30, 35 species of birds on a Saturday morning, and just from looking at outside their windows or outside their near, in their yard. So that's something that everybody can participate in. All the information of how to do that is on our Facebook page. Uh, if you go to Facebook, we're simply at Bird Protection Quebec. Look for that name and it'll take you to our page. And, you uh, you'll see lots of information on there, stories about birds, stories in the news about birds, uh, people putting up their reports of what they've been seeing, uh, lots of really good information on there as well. So uh, those are a couple of the resources that you can use to, uh, to help you find out more about birds. There's also an email address there to reach Bird Protection Quebec. If you have any questions, you can post questions on the Facebook page as well. Um, and um, just use all of the information that's out there. There's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, the more you look up birds on the internet, you're going to find all kinds of resources and photos and videos. And uh, there's some live cameras that are out there around the world uh, that are focused on nests of birds. You can see bald eagle nests, for example. You can see peregrine falcon nests and monitor them in real time. Watch the birds, watch as the eggs hatch, watch the young being fed by their parents. And uh, there's a lot of really, really interesting bird related stuff out there on the internet for you as well. Sheldon, can you just review for me uh, what materials I would need for bird watching? Like I may or may not need binoculars or a pencil and paper. Yeah, uh, there's several ways you can do it. If you have binoculars, that's really great. I mean, that's one of the, the, the most popular tools to help, you know, you see the bird closer. Uh, what a lot of people are doing now, though, is they're taking pictures, snapping a picture. If you've got a digital camera or even with your phone, take a picture of a bird when you see it. And then you can take that picture and use it to look at the bird and try to help identify it by looking, you know, for things about the bird. Uh, there are also apps. I know some of you are into apps on your phones or whatever. There's an app called Merlin. And uh, Merlin is an app that helps you identify birds. You can see the bird, mark in things that stand out on the bird, like the red-winged blackbird, for example. If you put in to the Merlin app that you saw a blackbird with a red patch on its wing and a little bit of yellow, and you enter that into Merlin, Merlin will analyze that and come back and show you a picture and say, we think this is the bird that you saw. And nine times out of 10, it'll be the red-winged blackbird that in, using that bird as an example. Uh, so that Merlin app is free. It's really easy to use and you can really use that to help you identify the birds as well. So uh, definitely binoculars if you have them. Uh, using these apps that are available to help you identify and also taking notes uh, just by hand. If you've got a notepad handy and you see a bird, jot down some of the things that, you, that stand out on the bird. Those things actually have a name. We call them field marks. Things that are unique to a particular bird that, that if you see the bird again or, or you're trying to describe the bird to somebody, uh, you know, the, let's take one of those birds, the, uh, the goldfinch. Well, I saw this yellow bird, but it had a black cap on its head. It had black on its wings. You can mark down those little things that stood out about the bird. And those are going to be the marks that will help you identify the bird. 
and you can use those by looking at pictures or using an app like Merlin. Um, so thank you. Uh, we're a little over time and uh, thank you for your time, Sheldon. I don't know if you have a moment. I was wondering if there's any people who want to ask a question, we can just unmute you. I know there's a lot of kids here. Yep. Um, they could raise their hands if they have something they wanted to ask since they've been sitting here so patiently. Um, if not, we'll open it up to some adults. If there's anyone who wants to just help us close the session with a direct question to Sheldon that wasn't put in the chat already. Everyone doing okay? I think we all really enjoyed your presentation. There was a lot of positive feedback in the chat, Sheldon. <laughs> I see some applause up there, which is nice. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A little emoji applause. Here we go. Here's yeah. all the thank yous coming in. And as I said, if you do have uh, other questions afterwards, um, my email was up at the beginning there. Um, you can contact us or you can contact Bird Protection Quebec as well uh, through either the website or the, uh, the Facebook page and post up any questions there as well. If you see a bird and you snap a picture of it or you want to write down a description of it and send it in to us, we'll certainly try to help you uh, to identify it as well. Now, there's a lot of new birds that are going to be coming into our area over the next couple of weeks. Uh, all of the warblers are going to be coming through. Uh, we're going to see uh, rose-breasted grosbeaks, Baltimore Orioles, Eastern Bluebirds, uh, just so many different birds. When we do field trips with our organization, they're usually on Saturday mornings. Of course, right now we're not able to do them. But once we start up again, uh, for example, during a spring migration field trip, we can go out on a Saturday morning and in the space of uh, three or four hours on a bird trip, we can see sometimes 70, 80 species of birds within that period of time. So it's, it's really a great place to be around southern Quebec to see a lot of different types of birds and particularly at this time of the year. You know, we're, we're kind of upset right now that we can't go out and do those field trips. So this is why we designed these virtual field trips where we can bird from home and share what we're seeing with, with other, other people. And uh, we put up, a, if you go and look at the Facebook page, you'll see the pictures that people have been submitting with their lists of birds that they're seeing as well. So we put the list of all the birds that are being seen we put up a map to show you where the different people are located around the Montreal area, where they've sent in their reports from. And I think you'll be surprised at how many different birds you can actually see just by looking out your window or we're looking out in your backyard or uh, just on your street, uh, you know, in the trees around you. Um, it's really quite amazing how many different birds are out there. And it's a, it's a fun thing to do. It's easy to do. Uh, everybody can do it. And don't be discouraged at the beginning that you're having difficulty, you know, gee, what is this bird? How am I ever going to figure it out? We all started at the beginning somewhere too, and we all managed to find our way along as we go. The more you do it, the more you're going to learn, the more you keep looking at it. Um, you know, it's, it, it comes with practice like anything else. Why did I say that for? Um, so I just wanted to say, is, uh, I don't know if you said it, um, is it like early morning, like sunrise and sunset? Is the ideal time? Um, early morning is best. That's when the birds are most active. These weekly trips, the, the virtual trips that we're doing, we recommend between say seven to noon is probably when you're going to see the most activity. Uh, so really that's, that's when we do our normal field trips as well as early in the mornings. So uh, that's when the birds are most active and um, uh, that'll be your best chance of seeing, you know, the, the most number of birds and hopefully a good variety of birds too. Um, so two, two questions, sorry, two questions we had in the chat um, was specific things for feeding birds. I don't know if you can quickly address what a golden finch might eat and what a hummingbird would want to eat. Okay, the, uh, the American goldfinches, uh, they will take things like uh, small seed, but there's a, a certain type of seed that certain finches like. It's called Niger seed, N-I-G-E-R. And it's a very, very fine grain, a black seed. It's uh, a little bit more expensive than some of the other bird seeds that you can get. And there's certain types of special types of feeders that you need to put it in. So you would need to look for a goldfinch, a Niger feeder. It's usually a long tube with very, very tiny holes in it because the seeds are very, very tiny. And uh, if you tried to put it in a regular feeder, the seed would just fall out automatically. So it's a, a seed called Niger, and it's a very fine uh, grain uh, black seed. 
that you can get at, uh, at pet food stores um, for those birds in particular. Hummingbirds, uh, their natural food is nectar that they get from flowers, uh, but you can actually get hummingbird feeders and you, make, you can make a mixture of uh, sugar and water that goes into those feeders and the birds, the hummingbirds will come and drink that nectar. Uh, but their natural food is to come from flowers uh, where they stick that very long skinny beak inside the flowers and pull out the, uh, the nectar that they get from the flowers. Well, I gotta say this is a breath of fresh air during the pandemic to think about birds and to hear birds. And it's, I think it's a great time to start this up. Um, great time of year. Um, really appreciate your time, Sheldon, sharing your passion with us. I think it's uh, spreading. We're all feeling it today that we wanna go out and look for some birds. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me and thanks to everybody who checked in. And uh, we have another one coming up in two weeks and we're gonna specify uh, information about feeding birds and how to attract more birds to come and see you. Uh, so we hope you can maybe join us for that one coming up in a couple weeks time. Thanks Sheldon. All right. Thanks so much everyone. Happy Thanks. birthday. Bye everyone.